Hey, what's up? This is Nate B. I want to give a quick shout out to Peanut and Roman at the NFL Players Second Acts podcast. So here's what happened. We had a super dope episode and y'all should check out all of the episodes they have. Incredible guests telling incredible stories, doing big things. But at the end of the episode, they were like, yo, we want you to freestyle. And I was tired. I wasn't on my game. I didn't feel right when I left, you know? I actually went home and couldn't sleep. I'm like, man, you can't really leave him with that. I mean, you gotta redeem yourself. So here we are. It's a little something for y'all. And you can see New York as the backdrop, right? But I'm from Seattle. I feel right at home when it rains. The 206 is synonymous with my name. I'll take the space needle straight to the veins. There's something in the way that city make me feel. Word to Kurt Cobain, rest in peace to a legend. I want to find Nirvana on earth before I get to heaven. That's no desire, no sense of self. Feeling rich without money. See, that's a sense of wealth. Once had low cash, now my digits is up. But if you can't trust me, you can't trust us. We dead mice, peanut, and Roman. It's a must, though. This is something you ain't see before, but I'm not MC Gusto. Yeah. See, this is hip hop. I'm back, bigger and black. This slaps like Chris Rock. Yeah, and we don't make music, we make movies, kid. Smoking every single track, just like Pookie did, for real. Something like Second Act. I'm Peanut Tillman, and this is the NFL Players Second Acts Podcast. And with me, as always, this is my older uncle, uh, Roman Harper, right here. What's up with you? What's up with it, boss? I'm good. See, that's the type of intro I'm used to getting. Right? When he just says my, my government name, I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do next. All right. Anyways, I do know what to do next. And that is ask all of our followers, our watchers, to make sure, continue to hit subscribe, hit like. Give us a five-star rating. I'm telling you, not asking. Give us a five-star rating anywhere you pick up your podcast, whether it's Apple Podcasts or iHeartRadio. Please give us a look, a listen. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Peanut, who's our guest today? An oldie but a goodie. This is someone that we're trying to be like, you know, on the, on the national level. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying he's to get there, dog. I'm 2003 there. draft class. I dressed he, up for this, too. Yep. He's a third okay. round, 2003 draft class. Played 11 years. Uh, and since... Leaving the game, he has become a media mogul. He is one of the ho- excuse me. He is one of the co-hosts from the CBS Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome in Nate Burleson. What's, What's up, y'all? What's up? I appreciate that on, introduction. Man? Thank y'all for having me in. Uh, before we get started, I just want to say um, I've always admired what you guys did on the field, yeah. but what you guys have done in your second act has been incredible, and it's a beautiful thing to see, man. So. Um, this is an honor. You know, when I got word that y'all wanted to have me on, I was pumped about it. Man, you even got the voice, don't he? Like, I feel like when you played, I didn't really recognize your voice, but it's like, well, you know, I, I really want to thank y'all for tuning in and coming. You remember? Y'all uh, been working on it. Dr. Yeah, Green Eyes, yeah, yeah. Donnie Simpson oh, on BT. Shout out to Donnie Simpson. Yes. That was one, Dr. That, Green Eyes. That was, that was one of my inspirations. I see it. Okay, you see it. It's, see? it's, coming, it's coming in. Thank you yeah. for noticing, man. Yes, sir. It's the yes, little sir. things. That really get people excited. Like I, yeah. As Nate has progressed in his career and his life, he's like, bro, I don't even care about you giving me all the love and some of the catches and stuff. It's like, man, did you feel that story? Did you feel the passion in my mm. voice right mm. there? Exactly. That's what he's looking for. Yeah. So you actually just scratched that itch for That's yeah. a fact. I appreciate that. <laughs> I like, yeah, 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 yeah. No worries, man. But yeah, man, you've been you've been killing on CBS Morning Show. I Thank like you, it. Man. You represent us well. Thank you. You're doing your thing. I Thank like you, you straight hand. Like it, you give athletes us a, a platform to say that yo man we not just athletes like mm. i don't just have I, to agree. I don't just have to talk about sports i don't just yeah. have to be a coach or an analyst like mm. i can come in i can do radio i can do tv i can do like legit news i can interview the president i can interview mm. politicians yeah. uh, hip hop artists yeah. athletes like i can do it all yeah you know what i'm saying and i'm just i'm proud of you I, I i really like what you've done you started out at good morning football and your progression and the the work ethic yeah. that you put in and like you legit you you like legit media like you you doing the damn thing and Thank i you. just hey man i applaud you it's it's amazing to see yeah i it's amazing I, to I, see. I sincerely received that man and um and like i said you guys have also um you know kind of recreated the blueprint i feel like we all we all have this one big blueprint 
um, and we're all making our marks on it, you know, mm -hmm. individually. Um, you know, Strahan, of course, is one of the people that they look at and they say, all right, he going from a Super Bowl champion, Hall of Famer, into media, into news, and now hosting everything from reality shows to game shows. Um, now there's this blueprint out there. Mm -hmm. But what I love about this new landscape and the new NFL player is that we're all grabbing that same blueprint, making our mark, saying, here's an avenue for you as a player. You can go into podcasting. You can um, go into law enforcement. You can go into coaching if you want. But you can also go into fashion, media, yeah. music, finance. You can do whatever you want. Um, you know, I think the greatest lie sports has ever told us as athletes is all you need to do is care about this. Yeah. And I don't know where we picked it up from. Maybe it was just indoctrinated as a young age, at a You're young age. Lying, but, though. like, <laughs> we, we got to the NFL, and if you would have talked to us our rookie year, our second year, about what we would do for the team, I think about 99% of us say, I'll run through a brick wall and mean it. Like, yeah. I, I die for these colors. This this logo on my helmet, this emblem, and, uh, and these team colors, this is everything that matters to me. And for the most part, that helped us do our jobs at the level it did. Right. But it also blinded us to like the next chapter and what we were also going to have to face, which was figuring out who we are after we take the helmet off. Right. Um, and I think us and, and many others like us are just representations that being an athlete was just a small part of our lives. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily who we were. Um, and the sooner guys can figure that out, which is why I love this new generation of athletes. It's like you'll be better off once retirement comes. It actually makes a lot of the coaches and people that work with these players more uncomfortable. It they, does, right? They, they're not used to it. They're used to just guys doing what you tell them. Right. And now they're like, man, you know, they understand they have value. Right. They understand that they're not just football players. Right. That, and, you know, they they have their own face. They have their – they want to know what their, you know, the media responsibilities right. and who they want to be off of the field is where – their brand. Their brand, yeah. And so, so – all these things are happening, and <clears throat> I just think it's really cool. Um, I heard you talking to this guy about uh, on Cairo Radio. It seemed like one yeah, of your Cairo. homies. Yep. Yeah, yep. it seemed like you guys really yeah. hit it off. Like Cairo's that's hometown right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. I can yeah. tell. Like You guys opened up, shared a lot of stories, mm -hmm. and just you talking about your whole journey of like, man, you know, uh, the confidence that came with as you got more and more of this mm. and doing more and more of the TV that yeah. it allows you all of a sudden now you're relaxing and yeah. you're, you're really getting into these things more. At what point in time did that really start to happen for you? Mm. I'm I'm in this space right now yeah. uh, that I work with on a day. Uh, that's my normal job. And yeah. so I'm trying to do more personality TV. Yeah. I want to be able to be able to make that switch and show like, I have more of than range. just football knowledge. Of course. I do have way yeah. more range. Yep. Like you guys are just holding me down from this, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. like I can talk way more about right. way other things. I actually right. enjoy that way more. Of course. Right. You know what I mean? Of I'm course. not just football. I mean, of course. that's just a small chapter in that's my right. life. That's right. There's so many more to do. How do you get to that? And at what point in time did you all of a sudden start to get way more comfortable? Like, dude, I can totally expand and do this. Yeah, that, that's such a good question. Um, the first time I was actually on TV – was the year I got drafted, which was 2003. I went to the NFL Network, and um, you know I, I got a little bit of a buzz from it. And it, it, and I got to be honest, it was more self-serving. I'm a wide receiver, you know, we're divas. Yeah, you know, I like to hear myself talk, and I like to look at myself I mean, on TV. Yeah, yeah. It's no surprise to y'all. You probably don't even need them glasses. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I get it. <laughs> nah, man. I'm, I'm, come on, I'm, I'm almost 42. I'm, I'm blind up here. But um, but you know, I, I so I, I say that because every off season I would do either local or national TV or radio. Mm -hmm. I would go do the NFL Network hits. They were never paying me. Yeah. I would do stuff back home. So it was almost like I was sharpening the tools yeah. um, while I was playing. And then I went to the broadcast boot camp. And that's when I realized that I wanted to do this as a career. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was funny because I had a little bit of were a pat on the back. you still playing when you I was did still that? playing, okay. yeah. I was like year nine, ten. Mm -hmm. And um, they, they basically gave me a pat on the back. Say, hey, man, you're, you're talented. You, you got, you got some, some foundational pieces that could allow you to be good at this. Um, if you choose to. But I remember struggling when we did the exercise of calling a game. Like it just, it was so foreign to me yeah. to have somebody in there to kind of like tee me up. It was like the alley-oop and I just kept missing the dunk. <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, uh, first and 10, Ben Roethlisberger drops back and the pass is completed. And he'd wait for me to jump in. <laughs> and I just didn't know how to do that dance. <laughs> so once I left the broadcast boot camp, as much as I felt good about certain areas of being on TV, 
I just kept thinking about where I struggled. I guess that's the athlete in us, yeah, you know? Yeah. We focus on the details of something we're not doing well at. And that made me feel like a rookie again. Yeah. And that that's what I think that element encouraged me the most. When I retire, I'm gonna work on this craft. I gotta, yeah. I gotta be good at it. And at that time, I had um, a partnership with a clothing line, Baines and Baker. I had um, an Italian restaurant in Seattle. I had a, a couple other small things going on from a creative standpoint. So I had all these things that I didn't know. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So I had to pick something. I, it was either go into TV or try my hand of all these other things. And I thought, if I go into TV and I'm good at TV, it's going to make these other things easier. Yeah. yeah. So let's get into TV. And that's when I signed on to NFL Network. And from there, I was the busiest guy. Like, there, was, there wasn't there was nothing that they couldn't call me for. It was live TV, tape TV, pregame, halftime, postgame, digital content. Getting reps. Uh, getting reps. So all it was was getting as many reps as I could. And also, you know, I wanted to prove that I was just as good as some of these guys that were there. I didn't, yeah. I didn't have the gold jacket or the ring. So yeah, for sure. You know, I, I needed to work twice as hard. And, and I felt like, remember when we first got in the league and the OGs be like, hey, hey, Rook, slow down, man. Chill out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's Friday. You're going too hard. It's Friday. Yeah. That's Marty what, Booker got me with that. Come on, Rook, what you doing? It made you feel real bad, right? And he's just like, I'm practicing. I'm just. I'm, I'm, I'm doing what they pay me I'm to do. I'm doing what they pay me to do. I'm working. Like, yo, chill. Yeah. Chill out, yo. Chill out. And, and that's how I felt the, the OGs at the NFL Network were. It was kind of like. Hey, yo, Rook, slow down, bro. Yeah. Like, you're not getting paid anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, why you are you good. doing stuff that, that you're not getting paid to do? And I, I didn't have an answer. All I knew is if I got as much reps as I could at all of these different aspects of TV, eventually I'll start to find my rhythm. And yeah. um, and I'm, I'm still finding it, <clears> but, you know, I feel like I at least I found my voice. Yeah. And so, so look. I want this is gonna be the toughest question to ask. You, <laughs> all right? right. Okay. And so uh, Peanut got me so excited. I, I I wanted to hit you with this first. Okay. Okay. All right. Who's the best receiver? Calvin, better receiver, Calvin Johnson Ooh. or Randy Moss? You played Ooh. with both. All right. Randy was a different time in Minnesota when you were yep. him. But yep, yep. Calvin, you had young, you were older and you got Calvin. Yeah. So which one was the best receiver you ever played against? That you ever played with? I would have to go with Randy Moss. Um you know, a couple of reasons. One, longevity by his side. All right. Okay. Um, even at an older age, when people thought he was washed, he went to New England and mm, got killed busy. It. Got it killed like it. 22 touchdowns, <laughs> yeah. 23 mm. touchdowns, something wild. Um, he was the most naturally gifted athlete I've ever seen. I mean, he could play baseball. He, I think he could have ran in the Olympics. Basketball. If he, yeah, he, was really he was a really good, hooper. Really good hooper. Yeah, yeah. A beast. Um, and he, he would show up and not even really have to warm up. In his prime, like Randy didn't even warm up. I'm talking about not at practice, a game. I remember, you know, warming up next to him, and I'm like like Jim Carrey and Cable Guy. I'm doing all kinds of stretches, you know what I'm saying? And Randy's just over there just moving his feet up and down. Yeah. And the coach was like, hey, Randy, you got to warm up. And he's just sitting there like, whatever. And he's like, Randy, come on, let's go. We got a game in a little bit. And he just so casually looked over. He's like, hey. You ever seen a cheetah stretch before it hunts? And it was like one of them like abnormally profound questions that we didn't have to answer for. And I'm like, and we're all like, yeah, you're right. The cheetah never, it just goes. It yeah, gets the it. food. And and we all kind of looked, looked at Randy, looked at the coach. Coach turned around, walked away, and Randy had another big day on the field. So Randy was naturally gifted. Yeah, yeah. Right. I will say this, though. Calvin was a freak. Yeah. But he also worked, worked. his yeah. ass off. Yeah. Yeah. Calvin was 6'4", 6'5", 230. Sometimes he'd get it to around 240. And he still was a 4'3 guy jumping a 45-inch vertical. Yeah, it's crazy. Right. But he would show up every day and work like he was a free agent. Like, Calvin, when we could do conditioning, he wouldn't just, like, lead us by a step or two. He would beat us by as much as his athleticism was supposed to beat us by. Right. And I always, like, I admired that about him. Um and and I feel like if Calvin would have played as long as Randy, right. this would be a different conversation. Thousand yeah. percent. But I, you know, you you can't you can't knock Randy's numbers, and then on top of that, just like his his intimidation factor. I, I remember being in the slot, and there was a <laughs> there was a DB um, in front of him, there was a safety behind the DB, and then the safety 
from the other side of the field was rolling over the top. So he basically had to beat three levels of defense yeah. in one play. And sure enough, Dante Culpepper dropped back with max protection and let that thing <laughs> rip. Touchdown back in the end zone. Mm. Like, and I, I just remember being in, there were moments where I was just in awe. Like, I remember another time, DB is giving everybody fits. And Randy goes up there and I saw the the whites of the DB's eyes. His toes was all the way up because he's ready to get out of there. He's ready to back. <laughs> and then Randy, uh, the DB backs up, right? So he's acting like he's going to press him. And then he backs up to about eight yards. And as soon as he snaps the ball, Randy's off the line of scrimmage. He just goes like this. Now, mind you, he had a hitch. So he could have ran the hitch. Right. But he's like, this DB's off at eight, backpedaling, which means he's probably like at 15. Yeah. But, and Randy in his head is thinking, I'm still going to run past you. So he comes off the line of scrimmage <sighs> and just hot takes hands. Off. Hot hands. And then boom, <laughs> touchdown. So Randy was just a different type of beast, man. And, and yeah. look, it, that's what all the, the my, my, my former teammate, Darren Sharp, was like, look, like nobody would card Randy Moss one on one in his prime. Like you had to have another safety over the top. To. Or it was like you had no chance. <clears throat> and, and that was a whole defense. They he were like, was out there <laughs> doing yeah. the stay. Yeah. Like, I, I think what, what for me though, I, I think I had success with Randy. You played both. Yeah, I had success with Randy because coaches used to always say, man, you gotta guard the man, not his reputation. And I really, I really took that to heart. Like, yo, I he is Randy Moss, he is that dude, but yeah, I I can't be I can't be afraid of you, the man. Like your reputation, you're this, but like I'm a dog too. Like, and you also played to your strengths. Yeah, your length. Yeah, yeah. like your he's length. Way, gave, he's yeah, a big corner. Long. So <laughs> he's a really big even corner. if you knew you weren't trying to get your hands on him, yeah, you knew if you just did the street fighter like Dawson, just like reached out, <laughs> you knew that would just like it would cause a little bit of hesitation. If you can yeah. get Randy to hesitate the line of scrimmage. Not saying you got a chance to beat him, mm -hmm. you got a chance to stay with him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I've always admired those battles, man. Um, you know, it's it's just it's hard though when you look at those two guys because they're just so different. Like they Calvin are. was physical. I will say this though, you stack up their highlights together, mm -hmm. you're gonna see impressive catches. You're gonna see them go up over the top of guys, double coverage, even triple coverage. You're gonna see good route running. But I think the separation will be that Calvin was by far a better blocker. Like, Calvin was a yeah. beast in the run game. I remember me being in the slot and having a bubble route, and Calvin was on the outside. I got up to the line of scrimmage, and in my head, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm already thinking about my dance I'm going to do, because Calvin's about to run this dude into the tunnel. And yeah. I knew it. And I, I knew I was about 30 yards away from the end zone. I wasn't even worried about Calvin's man. He got up on that DB, put them hands on him, drove him to the sideline. I just ran right inside, because I trusted Calvin that much. Right, he, right. Nev he never gave up on the play. What was it like when you, because you use this acronym for her? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. His, yeah his, his everlasting romance, romance. Yes. with football. Yeah. yeah, with football. Yeah, yeah. All right. After being involved with it for eleven years, having to walk away, and yeah. you've had some tragedy things happen throughout your career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moved from a couple of places. You had an ACL injury. Yep. Like, yep. Talk Car about accident. that yeah. journey when you finally said, "All right, it's time to move on." Yeah, I feel like we all fall in love with this sport at different places. In our lives, you know, I started playing when I was a kid in Pop Warner football, mm -hmm. and then in high school it was like puppy love, yeah. And then it was like we got engaged in college, and then the league was like, "Oh damn, I'm married to this job!" Like, yeah. put a ring on it, you know. And there were some good times, you know. The reason I describe it like this toward love affair is because, um, you know, the good times are the contracts, the touchdowns, the yeah. uh, the the wins, you know no what I mean? Doubt. The traveling city to city and playing villain on the road, you know, all of that. Like it's like it's like it's like good sex in a marriage, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, for the, sure. The vacations are fire and vacation, the vibes are good. Vacation love is great, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's that's what the good times in the NFL were like. But then there's the injuries. There's yeah. the contract negotiations when they tell you you're not what you used you're to not be. Good. To devalue, yeah, the devaluing yeah. and which it plays such <clears throat> a role on our mental health, but we don't know it at the time right. because all of a sudden you go from when we were young telling us we're the greatest thing since sliced bread to when we're older that. You just ain't got it anymore, and this is why we're going to pay you crumbs. Um, and, and and I think like all of that, the bad times, it's like sleeping in separate beds or arguing with your boo or you know just just not being on the same page. So when it was time to walk away from the game, I mean, I knew it was, I knew it was here. Like I I, I remember seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. It was mm -hmm. brighter than ever, but I still didn't want to have that conversation with her. It was like it's like football came to me, and she was like. 
hey, Nate, um, can we talk? And you know when you hear that as a man. <laughs> It's like something, something. This is the real deal. Yeah, like, we got to talk. Damn, what did I do? Um, <laughs> and she basically said, the NFL basically said, I found someone else. He's younger. He's faster. He's more athletic. He's cheaper. And I'm happy with him. And I'm happy. And it was, that's when it sank in. Where yeah. I had to look at the league and just say, it was fun while it lasted. And and it also had things that I could fall back on. So yeah, right. there, there's also talking about the second act, when you have something that you can look forward to, it makes it easier to deal with like a breakup, like we all deal with when we play our last game. Right. Um, it's tough though, as a player, when your career abruptly ends and you don't have a next chapter to yeah. go to. Yeah, so why was it important for you to start the media mm. uh, like right away? I know for me, I did a little bit of media. I wish yeah. I would have did more like you did, like mm. in the off seasons and things like that. I went, I worked for Spot, but I went and I worked for Fox Sports. And I, I remember I was, that. I, I remember and that. I thought I was terrible. Yeah. And I was trying to get these reps and everything. And yeah. I, I wish I envy you because you said you you were going and you were getting all these reps and you were doing all these things. Yeah. And I wasn't as prepared as I should have been. Mm. So why do you think it was important for you? to go and get all these reps during the off season? Um, I just knew, one, if I was in the building, these execs and producers would get to know me. Yeah. And when somebody knows you, you're much more than just a talent. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. when they bring on athletes, it's just like, you're a football guy talking football. But if they know me, it's, you're Nate Burleson, the football player talking football. Yeah. Um, and they want to help me out and they want to make it work. I um, mean, they're a little bit more honest with me. I remember I had a bad show. I was working for the NFL Network. In my head, I had a bad show. Stumbled through a few lines and I just I took the long way to answer some questions. I just wasn't sharp. And afterwards, the producers came by as we were walking to the locker room at the NFL Network and he was like, hey, good job. Good job, everybody. Good job. Good job. He pat me on the back. Good job. And I was like, wait, wait, no, no, no. Don't tell me it's a good job. I didn't do a good job. Yeah. And he's like, no, I'm just, you know, I'm just saying. I was like, yeah, but don't do that. Like, I'm used to coaching. Yeah. You know, we come from the football I, field. It's like, a huge uh, thing just, for us. just be, just be honest. Mm -hmm. And and it also like, you don't want me to get into a place where I feel like mediocrity um, okay. is acceptable. Yeah. And so I can like BS my way through it or not prepare and just show up. Um, and I think from there it it shifted. So now they started like, they started coaching up. Nate Burleson, who's talking football, versus always high fiving the football player because he's in studio. Yeah. Um, and and, and I, I, I've seen that before with athletes. It's like, you know, you see them at, at one point in their media career, and then five years later, there isn't much growth. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And, and I feel like it's not necessarily on the athlete. If you're telling him he's doing a good job for five years straight, he's never going to change or approach it is his so job. It's so hard differently. to get honest feedback. Yeah. In this side of the business, yep. unless, like you're saying, you you build those relationships where yep. now they're going to be open and honest with you. Yep. And then you can actually have real growth. Because yep. the biggest thing is when, and in this space for me, is that I'm always trying to ask, like, all right, how is that? Right. How is this? And I know I try to look at myself, and that's another part of it. But when you don't honestly know, because you don't even know what they're looking for. Right, right. You have no idea. You have no idea. And you don't know your voice. No. Right. Like, you have no idea. I got to the NFL Network, and, you know, you, you try to be like what you see on TV and guys that are in the building. So, you know, w one day I come in, and and I'm just like, all right, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm be like like Dion and Irv. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they were in the building. So I'm coming in, I'm all hype, and I'm talking a little bit of <laughs> passing like Irv, dude. <laughs> I'm dressing fresh like Dion, And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not them, though. Right. Yeah. Like, so why am I trying to be there? And I'm like, okay, I see Marshall Falk. You know, he's a bit more of an intellectual type. So let me just come in and, and, and you know, focus on the pontification um, and, and make sure that, they, you know, when I'm talking about these words, that right, it, right. it's more elaborate and articulate. And I was like, that's not me either. That's not it. So what is my voice? And then surely, um, shortly after that, I started to realize who I am, which is uh, a kid from the West Coast who loves sports, music, movies, pop culture, who loves art, who can write, like that's who you that's who you are. That's right. your voice. And the more I displayed that, um, the more receptive the viewers viewers were. You can see it though too. And I, I think it's I think it's authentic. So yeah. you are well not you're not a self proclaimed, but your wife calls you and from what I've 
learned about you is that you are a creative. I am. I right? am a creative. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. married to a creative. So yeah. I, I know. So you know. Things. You know. I, I, I Scatter get, brains are all over the place. All kind of all over the place. You kind of <laughs> yeah. dibbling in this, dibbling in that. that. We got <laughs> all, all these grand <laughs> ideas. It's really it's grand like, ideas. You're like narrow it down. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, right? So, yeah, yeah. So accurate, so yeah. accurate. So this accurate. Dude, I, That's I'm a married fact. to one. So, That's right, a fact. And um, I want you to really dive into this um, this mantra you use yeah. about uh, open your eyes. Mm. And you uh, you had torn your ACL after one of your best seasons. Yep. I think that was in a... And you were down in Birmingham. You went to Dr. Andrews. Mm. You were doing some drinking. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah, realized, yeah. like, Man, like it's a slippery slope. That's a fact. And That's that fact. how fast it could easily just go away. Yeah. And when you start to get in your own head. Yeah. And you're not using that energy and putting it into other things. And you're talking about open your eyes. And I want to get this quote right. You talked about how all the beautiful things around you, the support system, mm -hmm. the people that you had that were actually there helping you, and uh, how bright today really is. Mm, yeah. And so yeah. maybe you could share with us how you still use that mantra about mm. opening your eyes. And every day you so I'm like maybe where you at with it now? Yeah, for sure. Um, I remember going to Birmingham, Dr. Andrews, world renowned um, doctor, and he did both of my knee surgeries. Yeah, he's well. a beast. He's, he's a, a beast. He's a I remember I'm sitting in there just depressed, and he comes in. He had a little country tone. He's like, "Hey, son, you're gonna be all right." <laughs> and I don't know. In that moment, I was like, "Oh yeah, I am gonna be all right." But I wasn't though, yeah. because it was my first major injury. Yeah. Um, and you know when you have that type of injury. First, you start thinking about if you're going to be the same when you come back, mm -hmm. or run as fast, jump as high, play as well, know. being explosive, right? Um, and, and then, you know, the actual procedure happens, and I'm in Alabama recovering. My family is still in Seattle. My kids are in school, so the wife is holding down the fort. <clears throat> and I remember listening to the game on the radio because it's Alabama. They don't play Seahawks games. And I, I just so desperately wanted them to say my name. Like, yeah. I don't know why. I just... Like you I want to miss you. Yeah, I wanted them to say like, man, they could really use Nate Burleson or you know thoughts with them. I just want them to like just focus on me. That that that's that that selfishness mm -hmm. um, that I was used to. And I think he might have said something in the beginning, but it was quick. Hey, Nate Burleson's out. Next guy up. That was it. The entire game they didn't mention my name, and I don't know why that made me so sad because I think it set in, it it sank in that. They're going to move on without you. Yeah. Like, this is just an injury. But one day, they are going to move on without you. That's the name of the game. Right. So, you know, the the first day I come back after being cleared from, like, using my medication, I'm like, yeah, let me get a vodka soda and uh, drink my little vodka soda. The next day, I'm like, yo, make it a double. You know what I'm saying? A few days later, I'm like, hey, just fill up the cup all the way. No ice, man. <laughs> yeah. Just slide them a little, honey. And then, like, a week later, I remember going to him like, hey, yo, uh, here go, honey. Can you just send the bottle up to my room? And he's like, uh, yeah, sure, you got mixtures? I'm like, no, nah, I don't need them. And I remember sipping vodka on ice and drowning my emotions in alcohol. Mm -hmm. And I, I've never had an issue drinking. Um, but in that moment, I feel like I was close to the edge. Yeah. I was either going to drink myself into a stupor or create some habits that will follow me for the rest of my life. And I woke up fully dressed. I'm, I'm a pajama guy, you know, hoop and T-shirts. A t shirt and a hoop shorts and t shirt when I go to sleep. And I had all of my clothes on from the day before in my shoes with my brace on, like on top of the sheets. Yeah. And I was sleeping still. And I remember waking up and I kind of like came to as if I was like sitting up in a casket. That's like what I felt like. Yeah. yeah, like the Undertaker <laughs> facts. Um, it, it was wild. Like my arms were like crossed. Yeah. So, oh yeah, he was, he was, yeah. I felt like, I felt, I felt like. I was in a casket. Yeah. And then my mind starts thinking like a creative, like, is this, am I, am I reading too much into this or do I need to read more into what just happened? Oh, yeah. I blacked out, woke up, completely dressed like the day before, with my arms crossed over my chest, like I'm sitting in a casket. What are you gonna do, Nate? Yeah. And I remember pouring the vodka out, putting it in the trash, and I was like, bro, let's rehab, lock in. Let's, let's get busy. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you got enough hurdles that you got to get over. Got enough obstacles you got to get around. Let's not put alcohol in the mix. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Um, and that's when I I got focused and I I came back from my ACL in like six months. It was extremely mm. fast. So that was a, a turning point because I either had to sit in this like state of depression um, and feel sorry for myself, 
or I can open my eyes and realize like, not only do I have a great support system, but I got everything I need to get back healthier and right, even stronger. Right, right. Um, and that's what I decided to do. Yeah, that's what's up. So now that you're in TV mm -hmm. and you were trying to say, you know, do, do I want to be like Dion? Do I want to be like right, Marshall? Right, right, right. So now I, I, I get how you can have that view. Now you're in like TV, TV. Mm. You're doing the news. Yeah. Yeah. Every day, five days a week. Man. CBS Morning Show. Right. You have a certain look. Mm -hmm. Your hair, your dress, yeah. your language, how you talk. Yeah. Like, it's not the traditional. And reporting to you live on the CBS <laughs> Morning <laughs> News Show. Right, Hi, right, I'm right. Charles Tillman. Yeah. And Why we're going to be like talking. Why are you talking? That's, that's, how, that's, people how, talk. Talk. that's <laughs> how news people talk. That's how they talk, though. Yeah. And, and it's, it's no secret. It no ain't doubt. no joke. No doubt but, about it. You're right about like, that. Did you did you get any flack or any pushback or backlash about just you being you? Because you you have your voice. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You said you found it. So yeah. this is this is you. Was there any backlash? Like, I, talk about that. I remember talking to Strahan um, shortly after taking the job. And he said, you know, go in there and try to find your voice right away. Um, also realize, like, there's a lot of people that, Love that you're there, <clears throat> but there's a lot of people that don't want you there. Right. And mm. and those people are also working for CBS. Basically saying that there's individuals that they don't want another football player. They don't want Kirkland Brand Strahan taking a seat when mm -hmm. there are experienced journalists that have been waiting for that seat to open for years, some decades. So I, there was a, a hyper awareness. Um, and it's got to be a good vet move to come out there yeah. and tell you that early. Yeah, though. yeah, no doubt, no That's doubt. It's like huge. And, yeah, and, and it gives me some sensitivity to people I work with. I'm yeah. not coming in with my chest all out. You yeah. know, um, I understand what it looks like. Yeah. Now I have to earn your respect by what I do Understood. and yeah. the work that I put in. But I did have some struggles though initially finding my voice because when I came in, I'm like, all right. This is news. It is different. And everybody kept telling me, like, yo, this is news. You can't dress like you typically dress, which I didn't really get because, like, that's, that's who you are. Yeah, but it's <laughs> not like on Sundays I wear, like, pimp and can suits or something. You know <laughs> right, what I mean? Right, like, right. I'd wear regular suits, but, so, you know, there were a few people that were like, hey, you know, you can't dress loud on this show. And I'm like, when did you, ever, are you talking about stuff I wore 20 years ago when I was on the road playing against the Green Bay Packers yeah. and my suit was green? And what is green? loud? What is, yeah, what it, is loud? Yeah, what is loud? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I agree. And you got to be a little bit more traditional because, you know, I, I speak with, you know, like we all do with our hair and our look and our cut and our swag and how we dress and walk and talk. Yeah. Um, so initially I came in and I was wearing a bunch of browns and blacks and navy suits. Like it was very blah. Yeah. And even my voice and delivery was different when I first joined because I thought that's what they wanted and yeah. that's what they needed. And I was doing the same thing. Hey, how you doing? This is Nate Burleson and we are here this morning. It's good to see you guys. Uh, we have a traffic accident on the freeway. And it's like, <laughs> it's not that me. ain't you. That's not me. Yeah. So one day I took all the suits I had in my office, and I put them in a bag, took them home. I replaced all those suits with suits that I have in my closet at home and brought them to work. And I walked in with a brighter color suit. It was like a deep red or something like that. I had my flat top. Was it like a cranberry? Sponge. It was like a cranberry. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, <laughs> and immediately, my voice was different. Yeah. It was crazy. Like once I got comfortable in my own skin, my delivery was different. Even the way I sat, yeah. even my body language was different. So um, it, it took a, a few months for me to find my voice. And um, and I feel like, you know, I, I'm at a good place. And, you know, shout out to Gail because I remember walking in with that type of suit and she kind of looked at me and was like, you about time. Uh, oh, yeah. it's like about time. Okay. And I'm like, All okay. Right, bet. This, yeah. is, this is where I'm at with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it, it takes time, man. I'm it does. for sure, for sure. So now being in that position now, yeah. has any other players like reached out who are in the in the media, say football, and they're trying to get over into like the news side of it? Have they reached out to you or have you like mentored? Like, look, here's what y'all should be doing. Of course. Because you're going to get my number when I leave. 100%, okay. bro. Okay. We got to tap in. Yeah. Listen, we got we have to be each other's biggest fans, period. Yeah. Sure. And, um, you know, I'm not just here to get in this position and close the door behind me. I want to kick this damn door down Yeah. so we can walk into the spaces that we want to walk into. Um, but, yeah, guys have reached out. And I, I told them the same things that um, I learned early on was, one, reps, but, two, 
force your way into these other spaces. Because when I was doing Good Morning Football, I was grinding away three hours of TV a day, live TV, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, and then, you know. Way harder. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. And and then I. But if that's all you know, that's all you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it was great to have those reps yeah. on the run and on the fly. And live mm-hmm. TV, you're it's like a heightened sense of like being on, on point. Um, but then I. I started to strategically put myself in different spaces. And that's why I joined Extra to do entertainment. Now, it's not necessarily hardcore news, but we do tackle hardcore topics. So they might be more celebrity driven, but it's the same type of concept. You know, yeah. we're, we're talking about celebrity news and sometimes the crossover between politics and death and tragedy happens. So people were able to see me in a completely different light. Yeah. They're like, oh, wait, like Nate, he can do entertainment? Oh, he's tackling you know politics because we're doing a story about Obama meeting uh the Super Bowl champions and he's he's speaking about it so eloquently like that I think that right there got the attention of um CBS and they were able to see that you know I, I remember going over to the digital side of the CBS building um, and they wanted to do a hit talking about the the opening season uh, schedule and and I remember something somebody told me a long time ago. Microphones are always on. Yeah. Um, good and bad. So watch what you say, but also take advantage when they're on. And I was over there, and we were talking about the season and what games I'm looking forward to and what games CBS had. But in between the takes, I was just sparking conversation about stuff that I knew they didn't know about me. I knew they didn't, they didn't know I owned a restaurant mm-hmm. or that um, – my financial advisor and I help athletes invest money or that I started a few clothing lines or that I had interest in poetry. So I was just like throwing this stuff out there, starting conversation. Mm -hmm. And by the time I left, I remember one of the producers was like, hey, Nate. And I kind of looked back like, what's up? He's like, hey, would you mind coming back at some point and talking about all that other stuff, (laughs) not just football? And I was like, yeah, yeah, of course. And I just kind of gave myself a uh, a fist pump because like that, that was the point. It was strategically done. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we assume that people know more about us than they do. Right. But in reality, all they care about is that we play ball. Right. And that's fine. You know, we've been playing ball our whole lives. So we almost have to force their hand right. and show them. So the the strategy came with little moments like that where I was able to step outside that box. And that's the advice I give to these guys. Like, I, I know the comfortable thing is talking about sports, but- Flex all your muscles. For sure. Like, we all have all these interests, yeah. and nobody knows. Yeah. So, it, it, and that's the best advice I can give to those guys. So, the wealth management, the clothing line, yeah. the restaurant, yeah. uh, poetry, art. Yeah. You have so much interest. What did you call it earlier? Oh, he's a creative. You're creative. a creative. Yeah, so, you, 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 you're, you're, you're <laughs> yeah. a creative. This is the term they all use. And, and you're, <laughs> this is, this is yeah. Heather's term. a creative, too. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, no doubt. Heather's a creative, too. Like, I get it. So, I can already see you yeah. and how you are and everything. But, yeah. like, how do you focus on what to do? Mm. Because you got the TV. Yeah. I'm sure you got to prepare and work on that because that's your full-time nine to that's five. That's a priority. But yeah. yet it's you here. also mm-hmm. – but yet also you got all these other interests. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you got kids. Yeah. And you want to be a dad. You got to be course. a husband. Yeah. You know, like, so that's that's a lot of it time is. to, okay, I got job, I got work, but my creative side and this and that, and yeah. I got to be a parent and – sports and uh, basketball games and like, what what am I doing? Like, yeah. how do you manage all that? I, I'm doing a better job of managing it now. When I first moved out to New York um, about seven, eight years ago now, um, did a terrible job of managing it. Mm-hmm. I couldn't. I, 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 I said yes to everything because I was like, man, it's, it's my opportunity to show right, you right. how versatile I am. I'm go. saying yes to everything. And I wasn't getting paid a ton to do it, but I knew if I got the reps and I got the exposure, eventually I'll get to a point where I can say no to things. Um, but because I did know how to manage being a husband, a father, a coach, juggling multiple jobs. Like I remember one day waking up and like little patches were missing in my beard. And I'm like, damn, am I using the wrong like facial soap or lotion or something? <laughs> and then before you knew it, big patches were gone. And then my entire beard was gone. But bald naked. And you know. Black man with no mustache, no beard. Can't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you, okay. No, no, no. Yeah. He got a little nah, bit. Thomas got a little bit. Thomas got a little something on the chin. Thomas got a little something. Shout out to Thomas, though. Yeah, he got a little, something, something. Thomas, you know yeah, got a little bit, a little bit. But mom is butt naked all the way around, though. So um, I remember going to a dermatologist, and it, um, it, it, yeah, it started as her just diagnosing me. 
And then it turned into a therapy session. She's like, all right, you have alopecia due to stress. stress. Your body's reacting. And this is its way of fighting. Oh, wow. And now I'm like, okay, that's weird. She's like, do you have history of alopecia? I'm like, nope. So run the family? Nope. And then she's like, well, what's different in your life? I'm like, oh, man, um, start a new job. You know, I used to play. I used to play. <laughs> that, that breath, though. Yeah. I like, started a new job. Because <laughs> wait, wait, wait for somebody. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. start waiting. Come wait. <laughs> that deep exhale. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, think, new, I think I kicked my feet up on the couch job. and everything. I got a new job. Yeah, I got a new job. <laughs> I'm waking up at 4 a.m. And she's just kind of listening. And I'm like, I used to have another job. And I used to wake up, at, you know, 7 or 8. And she didn't understand football. She's like, oh, I don't. I don't really follow football. I'm like, well, waking up at 4 a.m. is one thing. Moving to the East Coast is another thing. But also, this job, I just really want to be good at it, man. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, well, that's it. Like, you're, you're stressed out because of your job. You're, you're worrying and you're not embracing, you know, how much this means to you. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not stressed. You know, now my, my ego's kicking you're in. You're defensive. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm this. not stressed. What, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm like, no, nah, my old job, I used to have these... These linebackers and safeties, they used to try to, like, break me in half. Like, that was stressful. And I'm, like, smiling as I'm telling her that part. And she's like, no, like, look at the joy when you talk about football. That didn't stress you out. It might have been difficult, but you loved it. This new job, when you start talking about that, you weren't smiling. Mm. And she was like, you have to figure out how to balance your energy. And if you do a better job doing that, your beard will come back. And sure enough. I did. I started to focus and just be a little bit more strategic and not say yes to everything. You know, because when we leave the game, it's like we feel like we have to say yes to everything to prove to everybody that I'm so much more than a football player. Yeah. Um, But but then I I figured out that that was detrimental um, and I had to be a little bit more selective. Man, I mean, you just gave us a lot. um, And I I love that, too. Right. Is. Learn how to balance your energy. Like yeah. Everybody uses it in different terms or, or found in your, your, your inner peace or whatever that may be, but balancing your energy because yeah. you naturally ha- have a lot of things going a on naturally. Going and that's on. for sure. That's your, your type. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, I will use that when I get home as well, you know, balancing balance. energy. Balance. Yeah, yeah. Tell the really, balance energy. Yeah, it's I really probably big. do a better job of balancing my energy. I think my kids are like, Dad, you're always serious all the time. But I was like, but I'm not. But yeah, ever since hearing you say that, yeah, I think it's that's just, gonna be a that's gonna that's gonna be a good Your goal. kids say you're serious all the time? Yeah, because I'm I'm always like the authoritative, like, but I know me and I'm like, I'm the jokester. Like I'm always playing pranks and I'm always telling <laughs> jokes, like, but but you're, you're, you're the authoritative figure in the household. Correct. So, correct. Okay. So, so when the, when the, when the, and the hand comes down, it's, it's usually you. It's always like, me. Do this. Do always. that. <laughs> yeah. Always. Yeah. So yeah. I, it's yeah, all. I'm, it is always us. Wait till your dad gets home. Yeah, you know, I've, yeah. I've been hearing yeah. that so forever. I'm, 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 I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to you know be more be more fun loving and yeah, a little more balanced. A little bit more, more, more balanced. This yeah. is something so, I want to know from you. Yeah. And that is like, all right, after a year and a half in of CBS in the morning, how where is your comfort level at now? I'm really comfortable. You dress. Your dress is going there. Really Gail comfortable. really helped you out. I thought of that course. was probably huge. Yeah, yeah. It was huge. That's like big. That. Yeah, Gail, you know I mean? she's awesome, man. Um, I, I'm really comfortable now, and, and, it's, and it's because of, you know, how I see myself on air. I feel and like I'm being— what's next as well? Because, like— That's a good that, question. Because we good question. always naturally, like, what's next We think about us? what's next, yes. yeah. Um, I, I think my comfort also came in the form of the team I'm working with. So mm-hmm. at CBS Mornings, I didn't realize that you had your own, like— team of people you your assistant producers yeah I, I didn't know like i came from <clears throat> good morning football where yeah we had people that worked on the show but they weren't like our Assign assistants you, yeah, assigned yeah. to me yeah so i remember um that is different getting though. there yeah and they was like <laughs> hey so uh who you do you want your assistant to be i'm like i get an assistant yeah um so the producers are going to start um putting in their names to to work with you i'm like they're gonna work with me alone they're like yeah to tell your stories so when I go sit with Bill Russell or Frank O'Hara, rest in peace to uh, both of them, mm-hmm. um, or um, you know Obama or Michael J. Fox or Barry Gordy, it's a team of people that put together these stories. So I can tell any story I want as yeah. long as I pitch it and we can build out the characters, as we call it, in TV, um, and then we can execute it. And I just like, for a long time, I didn't realize that. I'm like, yeah. damn, like... Like morning news is a completely different animal when it comes to story- storytelling, especially at CBS. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the one thing they hang their hat on. So um, that that's why I'm extremely comfortable. And then as far as what's next, I have a production company. Um, you know, it's called Watch, which is an acronym for We Are the Culture House. Um, we have a few projects that we want to launch. Um, you know, I want to start doing work behind the camera as well mm-hmm. as an executive producer of some projects. I'm gonna start with a docu series, um, focus on sports and. Athletes, uh, not just 
on the field, but also what they do off of it. Yeah. Um, and, and then just continue to flex my creative muscles. You know, I'm gonna continue to write. There's a few shows that I pitched that were based loosely based around my life. Got yeah. a couple of nibbles at it, but nothing has landed. So just wanna wanna do more, continue to expand and grow and and uh and step outside this box. So speaking of shows, you know, I'm a I'm a fan of SNL. Watched it a oh, few times. Oh, great show, great show. So what's a what's a bigger thrill? So SNL did a parody of I you. I remember that. <laughs> and you also got recognized by Al Pacino on the red carpet. Oh, so man. bigger thrill. You did a good S- voiceover too, Al. S- yeah, S- yeah, S- yeah. SNL. You tried to do a de- decent job. Or yeah. being recognized with uh, Al Pacino. SNL was fire. Don't get me wrong. That was yeah. crazy. It was right yeah. before the Super Bowl. Uh, I think it was Chris Red. Yeah, and they had these these funky look little. little <laughs> he had the little braids in. He had the, uh, the 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 Tyler Perry braids that you have in his movies. <laughs> uh, but I thought I thought that was uh, fire. But Al Pacino though, like I was working for Extra at the time. I think it was The Irishman. Um, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's like you know, three, I'm just, it's like a four hour four hour movie, movie oh long movie. God. So I'm just doing my thing. You know, I talked to Nero and and a few other people that are starring in it, and then. I'm like, hey, uh, Al, can I talk to you? He comes over and I'm like, you know, just humbly, hey, how you doing? My name is, I, yeah, I know who you are. Nice to meet you. And I'm like, wait, you know who I am? Yeah, yeah. You, you play receiver. Yeah, yeah. You do the football show. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm at, immediately I'm sweating. Like back of my knees yeah. is sweating. I'm like questions. nervous. About, yeah, yeah, I'm like, things. yo, this is crazy. I had to like collect myself. I looked at, at our cameraman. I'm like, yo, just give me a second. Like, yo, Mr. Pacino, you for real? He's like, yeah, I'm a big football fan. And I'm like, yo, this is wild right now. <laughs> um, and then I got back into my mode as a professional and interviewed him. And and uh, so, yeah, that that's pretty cool, man. That's dope. When people that you yeah. look at and you've seen all their movies recognize you, that's sweet. All right. That's what that's This is about. something, Pina, I would love to know who's got the most out of all of us. You probably do, but... How many pair of shoes you got, dog? Oh, I yeah, saw I saw guy. Nate Robinson yeah, the at sneaker, the crib. Yeah, you brought out some some heat. I got some heat. I, you got dude, some heat. I, I would say I would say about. Do you have a number count in your head? Yeah, I think I got like four hundred shoes. Four hundred shoes. This yeah. tennis shoes or dress shoes? Tennis shoes, included? dress shoes. All my dress shoes are upstairs in my closet. My my tennis shoes and kicks are downstairs in my sneaker room. So yeah, I, I, I love kicks. I've always loved kicks. That's kind of like my thing, man. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, I, and I'm when a your collector. Foot don't change sizes for a long time. Yeah, yeah, that's you a got fact. The Nike deal, you was able to. You know what I mean? That's off. that's where the bulk yeah, of it. I did, I did, I did, I did a lot of that before yeah. I retired. I spent <laughs> like thousands of dollars on that. Now the Nike account, you I just like I loaded up everything. Me too. My kids, everybody. I loaded up on it. And they were young. I was like, you getting a size. Six Y, seven Y, eight Y. See, that's smart. I didn't I do did, that. I did all that for I my kids. I should have got all these sizes knowing yeah. it was going to come they one was day. Gonna, yeah, that's what I did. So I didn't have to buy shoes for a minute. They, they was like, nah, I just got it all myself. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but my boys, my, my sons, one, six, three, one, six, four. There was a brief moment where my um, middle child, Nehemiah, who's 17 now, he was like in seventh grade, big old foot. He's a size 12. And he's like, Dad, can I wear your shoes to school? And I'm like, yeah, cool. Wear my shoes. It's fine, son. So he picked like one of my like exclusive LeBron kicks. Man, boy came back. Them things were so beat up. And I was like, what was you doing, bro? He's like, oh, man. It was, a, it was like a gladiator day at school. He's like... He's like, bro, we played a Super Bowl, we had a, a basketball game, and then there was soccer, and then, then we also played kickball. I'm like, first of all, how long were you guys outside? <laughs> My shoes was beat up. And I said, Nehemiah, here's the thing, man. You know, I love you. But unless you learn how to respect my shoes, yeah. you will never put on another pair ever. Not happening. And uh, that was the the lesson of the day was like, this is how we take care of shoes moving forward. Yeah, I'm still like that with my son. They 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 already know. Don't touch my stuff because they do. What not size look. are they? Are they your size? No, they they're not my size. Okay, but okay. just like anything that that we have, Ooh, like they don't. It's gonna I happen have. soon. It's gonna happen soon. Yeah, I'm trying. Do you have I'm a trying. favorite pair? Yeah, yeah, the Concord Jordan. Well, yeah, besides those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, besides I'm those. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a those, Yeah, those yeah, are that's, fire. That's, that's me. The, the, I'm the black. I'm ever. the black. Yeah, the black, I, mean, black? I like the blacks. All, all blacks. blacks is fire. The Space Jam ones. The Space Jam's are fire. So, yeah. so the I like the Concord. I'm a Concord. Oh, yeah. It doesn't get better than Concord. It's, a, no. it's the most versatile shoe ever. You can say, listen, if you can, if you can go on the court and hoop and then wear it to a prom, come on, bro. Like you can wear with a tux. You can do a wedding. You can do anything. It's a fire. Yeah, yeah. It's a fire kit. I guess the final question we have for you today is mm. you know you've had a successful life an amazing career mm. and you're continuing to just kill it who would be on your personal mount rushmore 
uh, you know, um, people that have had just influence in you, people ooh, that have mentored you, ooh, helped you along the way, ooh. helped you along this journey, help you to get you where you are right now? Ooh. Um, I would say, one, my mom and dad, um, they have been my biggest supporters mm -hmm. um, on and off the field. Um, and they've always they've always seen more in me than I've seen in myself. So I have to shout them out. Um, and it's just staying within the family circle for right now. My wife, she, former track star, she won indoor hurdles as, as, as a senior. So mm -hmm. she's a champion. Mm -hmm. Graduated, then graduated with her master's. Um, beautiful woman. Really had the world in front of her and put everything on hold to to follow me chase this dream of the NFL. So mm -hmm. if if she wasn't married to me, she'd probably be some woman running some Fortune 500 company. Um, but, you know, she put all of her dreams on the shelf. So without her support, I don't think I'd be here. Um, but as far as, like, men that have, like, men or women that have been there as a support system, um, Strahan has always been there because there's these comparisons that happen, mm -hmm. and he has constantly told me, you're different than me. Be different. You know, you don't have to try to be like me. And if you're different and you're better in the areas that you bring to the table that I can't bring to the table, um, this this business is going to open up its doors to you. Yeah. Um, and I, I always thought that was dope because yeah, it, it sure. wasn't like there's only room in this town for one of us. You know, yeah, yeah. It, it was the opposite. It was ne like it's never been that I'm going to make room for you, which is why I want to make room for everybody else. Yeah. Um, Gail. Gail has been such an influence, and she's just a dope woman because she's constantly trying to build people up and allow them to grow. Mm -hmm. Like, So she'll have assistants and producers, but as soon as she feels like they have kind of reached their peak where they are, she's like, leave the nest, and, and I'll be the first one to stamp um, your approval anywhere. I'll, 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 I'll be the, the one that, yeah, gives the recommendations. Yeah. Um, you know, instead of just like hogging all the talent, mm -hmm. she puts the talent on and then allows them allows them to to leave and grow. Um, and then just like I think collectively, you know, and I said it at the beginning, I'll say it again. It's the brotherhood of the NFL. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you know, when I said that I've seen you guys as athletes on the field, but that pales in comparison to what you guys have done. At I truly mean that, um, and we don't say it enough, but. Um, I just I just love watching y'all work. And that goes for the rest of this fraternity. There's so many men doing great things mm. across all spaces. Yeah. Um, of course, in football, back into the game, on a low level like Pop Warner all the way up until the league, th there's guys that are coaches or assistants or working for teams that are doing a fantastic job. But from the men that have went into the medical field, law enforcement, the finance world, art, um, the creatives, I just, I just think like there's no better motivation than knowing that the guys that bled like me, gave everything they got, everything they gave to the game like I did, are excelling in, in other spaces. Mm -hmm. And that, that gives me all the hope in the world to know that we can continue to do whatever we want, man. Um, football is a, it's, it's a beautiful sport, and I don't want to be dismissive of the careers we had. Because it is like being a rock star with pads on. For sure. But if we can do that at a high level, man, we can accomplish anything in this world. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, you know what? No doubt. It's, it's two <clears throat> things I, I really loved about that whole breakdown. Number one was that, I mean, creatives got their own space. Yes, And that, yes. that whole description right yes, there. Yes, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Law enforcement. Yep. The creatives <laughs> are right <laughs> there, bro. <laughs> Actors and producers, guy like Matthew Cherry, who's who's an Oscar winner. Yeah, um, he's a director. Um, you know, guys like that that have have done such a good job. Um, but I will say this though, before I go, I gotta hook y'all up with some suits, man. And I mean that, I, and, I, and free of charge. You Same know, less. Baines and Baker is the brand. Um, this That's is why I'm gonna buy all my suits now. I, I got you. I'm I got putting you down. Let me let me let me I hook bought, you up I first. I bought straight hand some suits. Okay. I bought straight hand suits. Yeah. No, nah, see, you ain't gotta buy them first. I'm gonna hook you up well, first. I'm just trying to support you know I mean? it. And though, we do everything yeah. from traditional suits. We call this like the Jumpman suit. We have joggers. Um, it, it, it was built as a brand to allow guys to look fresh while not overcharging them. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because you guys remember when we first came in? For sure. And then people was... The, the walkers and the... the uh, but they was but getting the, us, but the though. Price, yes. The price the was price. killing us. And on yeah. top of that, they had the, they had the women in there was the, like, oh, hey, all yeah, right. Filling yeah. you up, get you right. <laughs> so, so, all right, because you're the real professional in this whole business, mm -hmm. I want you to wrap the show for us, man. Give us a... 
Tell them, let it be gone. Speak it to the camera. Let them know. We oh, yeah. Here. Well, listen, man, we out of here. Um, iHeartRadio. Um, you know, this is uh, this is the, the main stage for guys like this to give individuals like me the stage uh, to show that what we have done in the league, um, it, it is... It is a small part of who we are, and what we're doing now is is truly a um, a representation of how gifted athletes really are. I'm Peanut. That's Rome. That's Nate. NFL Player Segments Podcast. We out. We out.